Welcome once again. I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Now today's video is a longer one because I'm going to show you how to take a great interactive die set and use it in many ways. Sometimes a die set comes along that offers many possibilities and you don't want to invest in a die set that can only be used in one way. So I'm going to show you how to take the Lawn Fawn Peekaboo pop-up die set, it's a new one, and use it in many ways so you can make the most of your investment. I will first show you how to use it as it was intended to be used. Then I will step it up and use it in creative ways so that you can get more from it. And the best part, I have another video coming out in a couple weeks with even more ideas. Let's get started with this first example. I think it's best to see the completed card in action. When you take it out of the envelope, this is what it looks like. But when you pull the side a little bit, watch how you have this fun peekaboo pop-up that pops up right there in the middle. It's surprisingly easy to do. Another nice thing about this interactive die set is you can use it with other stamps and dies that you may have to create these fun little scenes. After doing this card, I'll step it up and show you how you can creatively use these dies in a different way than they were intended. For this example, where we have the butterfly coming up and the sun coming down. This uses the same die set, but in a different way, allowing you to get more from your product. And then finally, we'll do this one, which changes it up even more. When you pull the side, something pops up the top and the bottom. So we will start with the simpler version first and then work our way up. And again, I'll have another video with more examples coming soon because there are so many ways you can use this brilliant set. This is the new Peekaboo pop-up die set from Lawn Fawn. This is one of those die sets that I find worth investing in because you can use it in so many ways, which we'll demonstrate today and in my next video in a couple weeks. I like that Lawn Fawn packs a lot in their die sets. So you have all the dies you need for the interactive card and also some extra embellishments. I'm starting with this largest die first, and I'm going to cut this twice. One from blue cardstock, one from white cardstock, it doesn't matter what you use. I will be demonstrating how to put this together before we make a card. I think it's good to put one together first so you get an idea of how it comes together, makes it easier when you go to make your card. Let's start with this white piece first, and I'm positioning it so that the two vertical score lines that go up and down are on the left-hand side. That die actually scores those lines for you, and I have them over to the left. Next, I'm taking a ruler, and I'm going to draw a line at two and three quarter inches from the bottom. This is called the magic measurement for this interactive die set two and three quarter inches. That is the measurement that works really well for this. You can go less than that, which we'll talk about later, but it's a good place to start. Two and three quarter inches right along there, right along the center. You could cut straight across that right along the pencil line, or you can use a border die. This one is included in the Peekaboo pop-up die set, so I thought I'd use it. It cuts a wavy line along with faux stitching, so it looks really nice. I'm positioning that right below that pencil line that's at two and three quarter inches. Once I have that taped in place, I'll run it through my die cut machine. And this will cut that white piece smaller. And we only need that bottom area. This will be part of our peekaboo pop-up piece. Now those score lines are over on the left-hand side. And we need to do some folding along those score lines. We're going to fold along the first one towards us. So see I'm folding that up towards us. And then I'll use a bone folder to reinforce that. Then along the second line next to that, I'll fold backwards. So this will create a little mountain and I will once again reinforce that with our fold line. So this is what this piece looks like. This may look a little confusing here, but I'm gonna do this so many times in this video that it'll be easy to follow along with. Just bookmark this video so you can follow it. All right, so now we need to do our background. This time I'm rotating it so the vertical score lines are over on the right hand side, so the opposite. All we're gonna do here is fold the first score line back. So we're scoring that away from us. Then along the next score line, we'll fold towards us. So it's opposite of what we did before. And now we have this piece here, which will be the background. The fun thing about this is you could use pattern papers here, stamped pieces, whatever you want. I'm just doing a basic how-to here. Let's put these pieces together. I'm gonna to flip that white piece over and you'll see that little white flap. I'm putting adhesive on the back of that flap there. This will now line up with the corner on our blue. 
So I'll just pop it right there into the corner. You can use tape runner or you can use liquid adhesive. You'll see me use liquid adhesive later because I trust it a little bit more. But for this, I'm just using tape runner. Now we need to add in the pop-up feature so that we have this little peekaboo pop-up feature that'll pop up from behind that white hill. The Lawn Fawn Peekaboo pop-up die set includes dies that cut these three strange looking pieces. I refer to these as the lever pieces. These are three different options that you can use to create pop-ups. Depending on which one you use, it changes where the image pops up. It'll be over to the left, the center, or the middle. I'll demonstrate each. Let's start with this one first, this smaller one here. Now there are score lines along this piece that the die creates. I'm going to use a pen to make a little mark along the score line so you can easier see them in the video. You don't need to do these marks, I just thought it would be helpful here. So now we need to fold along these score lines, and in both cases we're folding towards us. I'll fold this little triangle towards us, and then I'll use my bone folder to really flatten that, crease it down. Then I'll fold that larger flap down towards us and use my bone folder to flatten that also. So we have this strange little piece. It looks like a hat on a stick, I think. But this is what makes the peekaboo pop-up feature work, and it's really easy. Now on this little triangle right here is where you will always put the adhesive. No matter what version we do, that's where the adhesive will go, on that little triangle where I put the pencil mark. So I'm putting some double-sided tape along that. Later, I'll like to use some liquid adhesive to be sure it holds, but here we'll use double-sided tape, only putting it on that little folded triangle, nothing else. You only need it on that little folded triangle where I put that scribble of pencil. Now we will take this and flip it over and glue it right onto the edge of that white panel. See that long triangle edge on the right? I'm gonna line it up with that white score line right there. And I'm gonna put it up towards the top of that white slope, but you could put it lower if you want to. This is one of the things that you can play with to change where your pop-up works. But this is a good starting point. The only thing gluing this in place is that glue on the back of that little orange triangle. All right, so now let's close this down like this. Then we can close the white flap onto the blue card. I'm putting adhesive on the edge of that white flap. And now we'll fold in the edge of the blue on the right. So I'll fold that down and then fold the white flap on it. Now this seems strange, but once you've done it once or twice, it's very easy to do. Now the cool thing is, is when you pull the sides of the card, that little lever pops up to create that peekaboo pop-up feature. Now normally that orange piece I would do with a blue that matches our card so you don't see it and you can glue whatever you want on it. But for this demonstration, I wanted to use car uh, cardstock that had a nice contrast so you could really see it. So now you can add anything you want on that lever as long as it will be hidden when you have the card closed. So here I just grabbed a little flower die cut from my stash. I'm gonna glue it on the lever here. I'm gonna trim my lever down because I didn't want it to pop up as high. And now let's close this. Watch, you don't see it, but then when you pull it apart, there you see the fun pop-up feature. Now this was the first of the three levers. Remember there are three different lever dies included in the set. Let's do the second one. So I have assembled the background and the white slope just like we did before, same thing. But now I have the second lever, which is a little bit longer. I did a pencil line where the score lines are. Once again, I'm folding the small triangle towards us and the lever towards us. And I will reinforce those fold lines. So there's a better look at it here. Now, again, always, you put your adhesive on that small little triangle only. The adhesive only goes there no matter what versions we do. All right, so I put adhesive along that. Now we're gonna open up that white flap and position this just like we did before. It just happens to be a bigger piece, but that's okay, it'll still work great. I'm flipping it over and that long edge on the lever piece, I'm lining up close to the score line of the white and towards the top of that hill. So again, the only thing holding it down is that little triangle. I'm gonna actually press that down to make sure it doesn't come undone. I now can put adhesive on the left-hand side of that white flap. 
Then we will take the folded blue side and flatten it and then flip the white panel over to glue it to that folded blue side. And now when we pull this apart, we have a lever that pops up once again. But this time, the lever pops up more to the right. It is subtle, but if you're trying to create a scene where it pops up in just the right place, it's good to have these options. Once again, I put a little flower die cut on there just for demonstrating, cut off the extra, and there you can see how this works. So let's compare this one with the one we've already done. When you flatten them, you can see how this one pops up a little more to the right than the other. It is subtle, but if you wanna create a scene in just the right way, it's nice to have the two options included in the die set. Before I show you the third lever option, I wanted to mention something. You could do the card this way, or flip it over and have your element come down from the top. So say this is a tree and maybe you have a bird coming down or clouds and you have a sun coming down. Remember, you could do this card in this direction or in the direction that I'll be doing most of this card video. So no, there are a lot of ways you can use these. I just wanted to mention this before we moved on to the third lever. Okay, the third lever, we're gonna start out with the same. Same blue panel, same white flap attached to it that we've done all along. Now with this one, it looks different. You can see the lever looks a little bit different. There's only one score line on this, and I'll do a little pencil mark where that score line is. I'm gonna fold back along that score line, and once again, we have this tiny little triangle where I'm going to put adhesive. Now, this is probably the lever I use the least, but it does give you an option for changing the position of where the pop-up is. All right, so now we're gonna put this right inside the white flap like we've done many times. So I'll flip this over, put it close to that white score line, and right at the top of the hill. In this case, you wanna make sure your hill is tall, that two and three quarter inches. This is gonna be your most limiting of the options, but it does work well with many designs. Once again, we'll put adhesive on the back of that white flap on the edge, fold the blue down, flop the white over, press it down, and now we have another pop-up feature. And you can see that pops up more towards the right. So I'm gonna put a flower die cut on this just to demonstrate, and there you can see how that one works. Now let's compare the positioning of all three levers. The one on the left is the first one we did with the smallest lever die. The one in the middle is the medium size lever die. And the one on the right is that L-shaped lever die that we just did. Notice how on each of these, the pop-up kind of moves over a little bit. Now, I'll be honest, I usually use the first one or the second one. Those seem to always work for me, but you can play around with whatever works for you. If you want to start with one of them, I would go for the first one. It just seems to be the easiest on hiding your little pop-up features. And remember, all of these can be done upside down, so your pop-up comes down from the top. That's just another design option for you. All right, let's get creating. Let's start with this first example here where we use the pop-up feature, how it was really intended to be used. When you pull the sides a little bit, you'll see that peekaboo pop-up come up. Now again, you can use this with whatever stamps and dies you may have, but I'm using some fun products from Lawn Fawn today. I thought this first one would be a great teacher card. For the basket of apples, I'm using the new Lawn Fawn Build a Barrel Apple die set. I love die sets like this because all you have to do is die cut from scraps and glue it together and you have a great little focal point for your card. So I cut these from some different shades of brown cardstock, red cardstock, green, and I'm just gluing them together. Very easy to line up and figure out. You could really create anything here. It doesn't have to be big, it could be smaller, you could create a scene. I just thought I'd start with something simple by creating this basket of apples as a focal point and we'll have something pop out from behind it. Now I want the back of this basket to be smooth so it doesn't hinder any of our pop-up. So on the back of this, I'm just gluing a white die cut circle. No one will ever see it, but it makes it nice and smooth there. I may not have had to do that, but I thought it would really help to make sure everything moves smoothly. All right, so now I have that apple along with a few extras to decorate the card. I did wanna make it look like someone took a bite out of one of the apples. So I found this little flower die and I'm just cutting it right along the edge of one of my apple die cuts and look at that. It looks like someone took a bite out of it. Now that all of our little pieces are ready here, Let's create the card base. The background will be blue, but let's start with that green hill piece on the front. 
This is just like the white piece we made earlier. So I cut that large interactive die from green cardstock and I'm drawing that pencil line at two and three quarter inches. Remember that's the magic measurement, two and three quarter inches. So now the score lines are over on the left hand side and we're putting that hill die right below the pencil line. I'll run that through my die cut machine and there we have our hill flap. I'll fold along the first score line towards us, the second score line away from us, just like we did before. So now we have that flap ready. Now I have the blue piece cut from the same die. This time the score lines are over on the right hand side. I will first fold back and then on the second score line fold towards us. So now we have our background ready and you can see how these fit together nicely. I'm not gonna glue them completely together just yet, only that flap on the left. So I flip that green piece over on that little flap, I'm putting strong adhesive. I like to use strong adhesive like Gina K Connect liquid adhesive. You can use double-sided tape or tape runner if you trust the one you use. So now we have that adhered. Next, we need to create our little lever. I'm not gluing that flap on the right yet because we need our lever first. This time I'm using the second lever, the medium sized one. Again, I'm folding along those score lines towards me. So the little triangle towards me, the big lever towards me, and I'm putting adhesive on that little triangle, just like we did before on the orange lever. All right, so now we'll fold all those pieces down. And again, that little triangle is the only thing with adhesive. We'll flip this over and put it right along that green score line. So I'm gonna flip it over here, it's best just to watch. Put it close to that green score line so that adhesive touches the green. And you can see the lever sticking out to the right, which is great. That means that it'll be hidden when we close that green flap. All right, so now let's just test it. Let's fold it over, see if it works. I'm gonna hold this all together. Pull it a few times and there you can see it just pops up just fine. So now let's make sure that's glued down by putting a little bit of liquid adhesive under that little triangle. You can skip this if you trust your tape runner. I have trust issues unless it's liquid or double-sided tape. So I'm just squirting a little bit of glue under that little triangle. But again, only behind that little triangle. If you glue more than that, you'll glue your lever down. All right, so now we'll put adhesive on the back edge of this green flap here right onto the left. I'm using some tape runner now. I'll later put something strong under it, but I just wanna make sure it closes nicely. So I'll close that down, press it in there, and then watch, our little lever pops up. And because I made the lever with blue cardstock to match the background, it's a little more hidden, but I'll show you how to make it out of clear later on. Now we can add our basket of apples to the green hill. I'm only putting adhesive on the back bottom of the apple so it only adheres to the green hill. I don't wanna make it adhere to the blue background or our card will not pop up. I always like to stop and test things to make sure it's still running smoothly. For the rest of the card, I combined three different Lawn Fawn stamp sets. I like that their style works to mix and match between sets. The first one is there in the middle. It's a new one called Abs Absolutely Awesome. I use the little mouse along with the little sign. On the right, we have Thanks uh, bu a Bushel, which is an older set. I used a sentiment from that that says Thanks a Bushel. And on the left is Special Delivery. I used a tiny little sentiment that says hugs, and I'll stamp it on the sign that our mouse will be holding. So I like to mix and match between the different sets. Off screen, I stamped, colored, and die cut the little mouse and the little sign that he's holding. I also used a light blue marker around the white trim of our die cut. So I didn't have a white trim, instead it was a light blue trim that matched our background. So it blends in a bit better. I did that on the sign also. Now I'll take the little sign and I'll glue it right onto the mouse's hand. So these will pop up together. So you really can have anything pop up here as long as it's hidden when your card is closed. And I just like to test it as we go. Something small like this, you should have no problem at all. All right, so now on that little lever, I am putting a bit of adhesive and then putting our little die cut onto it where I want it to pop up. Now you're gonna to wanna to play with this a bit a few times until you get the positioning just right. You wanna make sure it pops up where you want it and you wanna make sure that when the card's closed, it's hidden. So I'm just checking it here and it's working great. However, I don't like that green leaf on the apple by his feet. So I'm actually gonna change this up a bit. I'm gonna move my little mouse down on the lever 
And then I'm going to take that leaf on the apple there at the top, and I'm going to cut that leaf off and move it to the right-hand side. I felt like that leaf was in the way of the mouse. Now this is one of the things I just do as I'm creating. I'll move things around until I'm happy with the position. Because I used that removable tape for the little mouse on the lever, I was able to remove it and position it where I want it. Then we can glue it down with something stronger later. So I moved that leaf over to the side, putting strong adhesive behind it to make sure it stays. Now let's put our mouse back in place. Notice I kind of flatten the card open and then add our little mouse onto the lever. Let's test it out, make sure he hides nicely when it's closed and pops up where I want it. And now we can cut the rest of that lever off on the top. No one's gonna see the lever. It blends in with the background and I'm really covering most of it up with my die cut. So I'll cut that extra off, squeeze a little bit of liquid adhesive under there to make sure the mouse is stuck nicely to the lever and there we have our pop-up feature. Now we can decorate this however else we want. You can put anything you want on the card as long as it doesn't hinder the pop-up. So always stop and test it every time you put something down. Here I have some little white cloud die cuts that I'm gluing to the background. But again, I test every time to make sure it doesn't prevent that pop-up from going up. I've noticed really you can put anything down. It doesn't really matter, but it's good to test. All right, so now I have my clouds in place. I'll put some strong adhesive behind them and trim the excess that's hanging off the edge. Now the die set also comes with a regular rectangle with rounded corners and faux stitching that works nice on the back. This is a great panel to give more support to your card and also a place where you can write your personal message on the back. You don't need to use that, but I think it gives a nice finishing touch and a place for that greeting. I also stamped some tiny little hearts from a Lawn Fawn stamp set, colored them with pink, added blue marker to the white edge, and now I'm gluing them scattered around our card, just so there's a little more black outline stamping to match with the little mouse that pops up. But you can do whatever kind of embellishments you want here, as long as you can still have that pop up pop up freely. All right, so here's the completed card. You can see it flattens nicely into an envelope. And when you take it out, you have this cute little bushel of apples, but as you allow it to pop up, you'll see that fun peekaboo feature. So this is really how this die set is intended to be used. But next I wanted to show you some clever ways to use it. In my future video, I'll show you different size cards you can do in different orientations. But today we're sticking with this four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, vertical card. But remember, there's a lot more you can do, so stay tuned for that. All right, now let's move on to this card that has a peekaboo pop-up feature coming from the bottom, like we just did, but also from the top. This is a great way to step it up and get more from your die set. I started by doing a lot of stamping, coloring, and die cutting of these cute little images. I used the Lawn Fawn Butterfly Kisses stamp set. It's an older one that I really like. And then for the sun, I used the Lawn Fawn Out of This World stamp set. Again, Lawn Fawn images all mix and match nicely, so it's fun to combine different things in different ways. I will also add a sentiment to my card from the Lawn Fawn All the Clouds stamp set, and it'll say Sending Sunshine. All right, now I cut the large background piece from light blue cardstock and off screen I stamped on it with the Simon Says Stamp thank you text. I just wanted to show you could stamp on this background, ink it up, do whatever you want. I am folding the along the score lines as I've shown you multiple times to create the background of the card. Now let's create that little hill flap. So I have the score lines on the left hand side there. And remember we want it to be below two and three quarter inches. I'm making mine much lower this time. So that piece isn't as tall. It doesn't need to be in every case. That two and three quarter inch is kind of just a magic number that works in almost all cases. Here I'm going smaller since I have a smaller pop-up feature. All right, so now I've folded along those score lines, put in adhesive on this back flap. This is all like I did many times at the beginning of this video. Now we can create a little lever to go in this. Since my hill isn't tall, I'm using the smallest of the lever dies, the first one that I showed you. I will fold along the two score lines towards myself, just like I showed you before. I did cut this from a blue cardstock that matches the background, but I'll show you how you can change that so it's in kind of invisible. All right, now on that tiny little triangle, I will put some tape runner. I'm gonna put quite a bit on there. I really want it to hold. And we will fold back that green flap 
and add this right along that folded green line like we've done many times. Close to the folded green line, but not right up against it, and just below the top of the hill. So now we have our little lever that will pop up here from the bottom, and it goes straight up towards the top of the card. Once again, I really want to be sure this stays put, so I'm going to lift that up a bit and put some strong adhesive behind that little triangle. All right, now I want to make that lever invisible. So I'm gonna use a piece of acetate. So watch, I'm gonna trim the lever off of this piece, that lever that comes and sticks up there. I'm just gonna cut most of it off. Now, I do not recommend making the entire lever piece from acetate. It just doesn't pop up as well as cardstock does. But if you cut this lever part off, this piece that sticks straight up, you can replace that with acetate. Now, you don't have to do that. You could leave it light blue and it will blend in pretty well. But if you do want the lever to be kind of invisible, you can cut a thin piece of acetate and then glue that where the blue cardstock lever was. So I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid adhesive right here and then add this on. So it's really the same shape that we had before, but this time that long piece sticking up is clear so that when it pops up, you don't see it as much. You don't need to do this. You could do it how I showed you earlier. I just wanted to show you the option if you want the lever to be clear when it comes up. I really feel like if you do one basic assembly of this, like I did at the beginning, one or two assemblies, you can start making these little adjustments to make it even better, to change it up. So start simple and then you can start adding to it. But really this entire part we've done so far is just like we did on the first example in this video. Now onto that hill, I'm gonna start adding some little critters so I can plan out where everything else will go. I put a little bunny there and I also put a little bear on the hill. It's only glued to the hill. There's no gluing behind the heads of these critters because I don't wanna glue the card closed. All right, so now let's figure out what's gonna go on that pop-up lever. So I'm gonna flatten everything out and I'll put a little butterfly die cut on that clear lever. So I want to have it be about right there. So I will put some adhesive onto the clear lever, then add our butterfly to it, and we'll test it out, make sure we like where it pops up to. If we're happy with it, then we can trim off that extra piece of acetate that's sticking out from above the, above the butterfly. I like to trim it down once I'm sure I'm happy with the position. Okay, now it's time to do the cloud piece for the top. I'm starting with one of the large white background die cuts with the fold lines over there on the left, the score lines. This time I'm taking a cloud border die from Lawn Fawn. Any kind of border die here would work, even a straight line. I'm positioning it towards the top. Again, the score lines are over on the left. I'll run that through my die cut machine and now fold along the score lines. I first fo fold towards myself, then away from myself. This will fit along the top of our card. So now I'm kind of going rogue. I'm completely changing the plans of how these interactive dies are supposed to be used and getting a little creative to make it work for this fun double pop-up. All right, I stamped a sentiment on that, and now I'm also putting the glue on the back of the flap on the left. So now we have these two flaps, one on the top and one on the bottom. We're gonna create a pop down feature this time, so the sun peeks out from behind that cloud. So let's open up our card here, and I'm just drawing pen lines there where the score lines are because it's hard to see in the video. You don't need to mark those if you don't want, but I wanted you to be able to see. I'm taking another small lever die cut, but we're gonna fold it different. This time I'm folding away from me for the small triangle and towards me for the long lever side. And I'll reinforce that. Before we fold it in the same direction, this time we're folding one back and one forward. I know it seems a little weird, but I promise it works well. But as we've done all along, we're putting adhesive only on that little triangle flap. Now we're gonna take that adhesive, we'll face it down and put it between those two score lines, those two little pencil lines we did on the background. This time the lever is once again going to stick out to the right, but notice I'm putting it between the two score lines this time, right at the top of the card, and I'm putting the edge of that large flap right along that second score line. So this is oriented a little bit different than what we did on the bottom, but I promise it'll work. So here's a closer look. You can see the triangle is between the two score lines. The lever sticks out towards the right. Okay, now I know this looks a little weird, but I promise it works. And by doing it this way, you can have a pop up and pop down feature on one card.
So there, we'll just kind of flap that over to show you what it looks like and watch, it pops down. So now we need to add something to this. I have that little stamped and die cut sun. And I know I want this lever to be shorter, so I'm gonna trim a little bit off to start with. And I'm putting adhesive onto the front of that lever. Now I need to play around with this to see where my sun needs to be so that it peeks out just a little bit from the bottom of the cloud, but also will be hidden when I have the card closed. So I stuck it on there and that works out well. So I will put a little stronger adhesive behind it just to make sure it stays put. Keep testing it, make sure you like it, and then cut off that extra bit of the lever that's sticking out behind the sun. Don't get discouraged if you can't get the position right the first time. Just wiggle it around until you're happy with where the die cut is on the lever and so it appears where you want it to on the card. Now I wanna make sure this lever stays put, so I'm putting a little strong adhesive under it. We'll test it one more time. I'm happy with it. So now we can put adhesive on the back edge of the white flap and the back edge of the green flap. And we'll glue those to the folded blue piece on the right-hand side. So on our first cards, we just had this one flap on the bottom. On this one, we have the flap on the top too. So I'll give that a few minutes to dry. And when it's flattened, you don't see much, but when you allow it to pop up, you see the butterfly and the sun. I did add some additional little flower and leaf die cuts to decorate around our little bunny and bear. Those are using the stamp sets that I showed you earlier. You can really create fun scenes with these. So many things you can do. I love to mix and match the Lawn Fawn set, so this was really fun for me to get to do that. Again, I'm using the other stitched rectangle die in the set to create a white die cut for the back where I can write my personal message. So here's what the card looks like. You can take it right out of the envelope and it looks like this, but when you allow it to pop up, you immediately see the sun and the butterfly. It makes for a nice surprise and it allows you to take that one die set that's really meant to do the pop-up feature and make it do a pop-down feature on the same card. It's fun to have both together on one. All right, now I have one last example in this video and this really changes it up. In this case, we have a pop up feature on the top, pop down feature on the bottom, and it kind of goes past the edge of the card. So this is what it looks like when you take it on the envelope. And when you pull the sides to pop it up, you have the unicorns that come out. I kept this pretty simple. You could really create some fun scenes here and have anything pop up, maybe airplanes, or you can do an underwater scene, lots of things but unicorns seem just right for this one. All right, so I have a blue background that I cut using the interactive die, and I'm doing the fold lines like I've always done, fold back first and then fold towards yourself. So you have that fold on the right-hand side. Then I have a white piece with the fold lines on the left-hand side, and we're gonna cut this different. I'm doing a cloud border close to the top, then a cloud border close to the bottom. So we're kind of cutting a section from the middle of this white piece. Remember the score lines are over on the left. So we have this strange looking flap here with clouds along the top and the bottom. And this will go on the center of our card. Usually we do the flap towards the bottom or on the top. This time we're doing it right on the center. All right, so I can go ahead and glue that to the edge of our card by putting adhesive on that back little flap and lining it up with the left edge of the blue piece. Let's do the pop down feature first. I have a small lever die cut. I'm gonna fold the little triangle back and the long lever piece towards me. So this is opposite of what we did at the beginning, how you're normally supposed to do it, but this will give us that pop down feature. I'll reinforce those score lines, and then I will put adhesive along that back little triangle. Adhesive always goes there. That's something important to remember. This time I'm feeling confident, so I'm putting liquid adhesive on it right away, so I know it'll stay put. And I'm putting that close to that white folded edge and making it close to the bottom of our cloud flap. So now this will pop down and off the bottom of our card, which I think is really fun. For the lever on the top that will do the pop-up, I'm starting with the same die cut, the small lever. This time I'm folding the little triangle towards me and the long lever side away from me. So that's opposite of what we just did. Once you do it once, it's pretty easy to do. Now I will put adhesive on that tiny little triangle 
and we're going to put it towards the top of the blue piece between the two score lines. So this is like we did for the Sun Lover on the last example. So let me do marks for those score lines so you can better see it. I'll just place this right between it. The lever will stick out to the right hand side. Press that down, make sure it really adheres. Here's a closer look at how it's glued in there. Just that little triangle is glued down. We'll close that up and watch. When we pull this apart, we have a pop-up at the top and a pop-out at the bottom. Now you could do so many things with this design. You could do an underwater scene. You could do just about anything you want. I'm gonna keep it simple and add some unicorns to those levers. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and close this flap down so I can get the spacing just right on everything. Usually I close this flap down last. But I feel like the positioning is not that important with the unicorns because it's okay if they go off the bottom of the card. So I'm just going to glue it all down and hope for the best. I wasn't sure at this point what I was going to add to this. So I looked at the Lawn Fawn Unicorn Picnic stamp set. And also this airplane one would be fun to have airplanes popping up below and above the clouds. But in the end, I decided to go with the unicorns because who can resist unicorns? Now, I also used a large sentiment there in the middle of that cloud. This is from the Concord and Ninth Everyday Sane stamp set. I cut it from gold glitter and I cut out this little part of that unicorn. So it looks like it's peeking out from the H on our hello sentiment. And I also stamped a greeting below that. I also have two other unicorns here that I stamped colored and fussy cut, so there was no white trim. I don't know, sometimes I like to fussy cut. And I'm gluing those unicorns onto the levers. Because that white cloud area is so wide, I can use bigger images on here and they will stay hiding when your card is closed, but you always wanna check. I could have used acetate for those little levers so you didn't see them as much, but I decided to keep it simple and just use the blue cardstock that I used on my blue background. I think it looks okay. I like to glue these die cuts when the card is flattened so I can be sure I like the position, test it out, and cut off the extra lever. So that's it for this one. Once you get the um, idea down on how to use the levers in different ways, once you do them a few times, you can really get creative with your designs. I hope you like seeing these different ways you could use that one interactive die set creatively so you can get different types of interactive cards. Now I do have another video coming out in a couple weeks that will show you how to use the same peekaboo pop-up die set, but use it for a horizontal card and also for a five by seven card. So stay tuned for that. Couldn't fit much more in this video, so I have to stop here. Here is a peek at how I did create a horizontal card. You can see here, instead of a, a tall card, it's a sideways card, but the pop-up feature still works on it. So I'll finish this card off in that video that's coming up soon. All right, I hope you liked all of these different examples for using this great die set. Lawn Fawn really knocked it out of the park with this one. I love sets like this that can be used in so many fun ways. If you're interested in what I used, I link it below in my description. And here at the end, I'll link to a couple other interactive card videos that you may like. Thanks for watching this long video. Have a good night. We'll see you soon.